a novel of disillusionment, a modernist novel. This is what The Sun Also Rises is all about. Hello, this is Hina from Team Walat. How are you? Today, we shall discuss the first novel of American author Ernest Hemingway. The name of his first novel is The Sun Also Rises. It was published in the year 1926. And as I told you, the genre of this novel is post-war, modernist it is a travelogue because people are traveling constantly from one place to the other but aimlessly and uselessly basically lost generation and also it is a novel of disillusionment people are doing things for the heck of it for the sake of it without any purpose you'll know everything the setting is france and spain primarily the towns in france and spain in the year 1924 and the narrator is jake barnes he narrates the story in the past tense. Remember the name, Jake Barnes. I will call him Jake throughout the novel. And look at Ernest Hemingway on the screen. See, basically, Ernest also was a part of the war, okay? Although he was not fighting at the front, he was a driver. But then he saw the horrors of the war. And when he returned from World War I, that is from 1914 to 18, he was absolutely disillusioned. He himself did not have purpose in life. And for your information, he married four times. And at the end of his life, he committed suicide, just like his father. Okay, let's move on with the novel, The Sun Also Rises. Jake Barnes is an American expatriate and a veteran of World War I. While serving in the war, he suffered an injury which has left him impotent. Expatriate, you know, a person who is not living in his native country, he's living in some other country. So Jake is an American, but he is currently living in Paris. And he was a veteran of World War I, which means he participated in World War I of 1914 to 18. But there he suffered a grave injury because of which he has become impotent. Okay, you understand the meaning of impotent, right? Presently, he is working as a journalist in Paris. He finds his life meaningless. He wants to escape it. And how does he do it? By endless socializing, meeting people, people, people without any purpose, trying to be friends with everyone, heavy drinking, leisurely meals, long meals, sitting there, talking, chit-chatting, oh, no purpose, and romantic flings. Theme is lost generation, right? This is actually what lost generation was all about. Not being able to stable, not being able to be stable. Now, Jake begins the novel. You understood Jake's character, right? Jake begins the novel, The Sun Also Rises, by describing his friend Robert Cohn. Who is Cohn? He's also an American ex expatriate, but he's not a war veteran. In fact, he's the only male character I feel you know, from these friends who's not, uh, more friends I will discuss, he will be the only one who will not be a war veteran, okay? He is from America, also living in Paris. He is Jew, okay? He's a Jewish writer and he was a middleweight boxing champion in his college at Princeton. Now, quote, listen to these lines, which, you know, Jake says for Robert. Do not think I'm very much impressed by that as a boxing title, but it meant a lot to Cohn. He cared nothing for boxing. In fact, he disliked boxing, but he learned it painfully and thoroughly to counteract the feeling of inferiority and shyness he had felt on being treated as a Jew at Princeton. You know it, how Jews were treated, right? So here the theme of religion, we can say that. Now let's talk about Cohn. What does he do in Paris? Who is he living with? In Paris, he lives with his bossy and very, very dominating girlfriend named Francis Klin. Francis is with Cohn only for his money, but later Cohn will leave her, okay? In search for it, for some adventure, because Cohn feels that my life is running so fast, I'm not able to catch it. I want to travel around. I want to see the world. So, you know, Robert or Cohn, Robert Cohn, that is his full name. So Robert asks Jake, his fellow journalist, to travel with him to South America. But Jake refuses. Why? He says that the only people who don't waste their lives are bullfighters. You will hear reference of bullfighter time and again in this novel because a very important bullfighter will come soon. Okay. At a dance club the same night, as I told you, Robert and 
this Jake, they go to dance pubs, they drink heavily, they chit chat heavily. So at a dance club the same night, Jake runs into his ex-lover, Lady Brett Ashley. Oh, she is going to be all around in the novel. Do not forget her. Lady Brett Ashley. She has got this title of lady because of her husband, whom she will give divorce soon and she will marry her fiancé, Mike. Okay. So now Lady Brett Ashley was once upon a time lover of Jake and they meet in a dance club in Paris. Who is Brett? I will refer to her as Brett. Brett is an independent British woman who served as a nurse in the war. She treated Jake and the two became lovers soon. Although it is implied that Jake's impotence or his inefficiency during the intercourse, that is the result of their breakup. As Brett says that she would always trump her or commit adultery with him, you know. Brett told him that if you and I will be together, I will never be satisfied physically with you and I will be going around searching for lovers. But to be very frank, she will anyway do it, even if he was potent or impotent. Why? Brett is a promiscuous woman with a drinking problem. She's terminally unhappy and always wants someone else, always looking for someone else whom she herself does not know. Disillusion, lost generation, no purpose. Still, the two make plans. Who to? Who to? Jake and Brett. Ex-lovers, okay? So Jake and Brett make plans to see each other the next afternoon. So what happens next afternoon at lunch? Robert Cohn, the Jewish writer, he also joins Jake. So who all are here at lunch? Robert Cohn, Jake Barnes and Brett Ashley. The next day at lunch, Robert falls for Brett. He's a very romantic person. He does believe in love. And he gets upset to hear her plans to divorce her husband and marry another man called Mike Campbell. And this brings another character in the novel called Mike Campbell, boyfriend, fiancé of Brett. Mike is a Scottish war veteran. He gets drunk all the time and sparks fights because of Brett. Here, theme of male insecurity. All the males in the novel here are insecure, let me tell you. He's also known for being bankrupt. Who? Mike. After this, Brett leaves for St. Sebastian, which is a beach town in Spain, because she wants to be away from Jake. She feels she has feelings for Jake. She feels she still cannot be with Jake because he's important. She wants to be away from him. Therefore, she goes and takes a holiday in a beach town in Spain called St. Sebastian. Easy. And Cohn also leaves Paris to travel out of the country where we don't know. Soon you will come to know where does he go. After a few weeks, another character enters in the novel called Bill Gorton. Bill Gorton is an army buddy of Jake from America. He lives in America, but he has come to Paris to meet Jake, the narrator of the novel. So Bill comes to meet Jake in Paris and both of them plan to travel to Spain for first fishing, second, attending bullfights in Pamplona and third, taking Robert along the way. So Robert will also accompany them to the bullfight in Pamplona, Spain. And these bullfights, as I told you, bullfighting will be very important in this novel. Just take it like if you have seen the movie Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara, in that you have seen that bullfighting, Tomatina Festival, etc. This is what everything they will witness here. You know that strong bullfighting? Yes? Now, Brett, who was in St. Sebastian, she has returned. She also wants to accompany this party or this group to Pamplona with her fiancé, Mike. Now, revelation, just at this time, what does Brett reveal? She reveals to Jake that she and Robert Cohn spent some good time in St. Sebastian. Oh, the woman and the man. She already has a husband who she's not still divorced. Then she has a fiancé, Mike. And now she's having a good time with Robert, uh, uh, with Robert Cohn. And all this time, you know, trying to hide her feelings for the important Jake. Is that complicated? Yes, it is. Location now is Pamplona, Spain. So from Paris, France, let's go to Pamplona, Spain. When they reach there, Brett falls ill because of which Mike, of course, stays back. And Robert, who is in love with Brett, also stays back. Both of them tend for her, take care of her, while Jake and Bill, they travel to rural Spain to fish. 
For five awesome days, Jake and Bill fish, play cards, drink, be merry, reminisce about their olden army days, reminisce about their friends here and there. And when they return, the group, you know, when they return to Pamplona, Spain, back from the fishing area, they return. The group stays at a hotel owned by Montoya. Who is Montoya? Montoya, the owner of the hotel, is a man who loves bullfighting. His hotel is filled with bullfighters and also aficionados. Who are aficionados? People who appreciate the art of bullfighting. And Jake was one of them. So Montoya has great respect for Jake. Understood? The next day, they all go to watch a bullfight. Who all, who all are there in this group? Of course, there is Jake, the narrator, Bill, his friend, Robert Cohn, the Jewish writer, Mike, fiancé of Brett, and Brett, the luscious woman. They all go to watch a bullfight. They witness a bull killer, Steer. Steer is the person who's trying to hold the bull, right? Balance the bull. So they see a bull killer, Steer. It's a very violent scene. And afterwards, Mike compares Robert to the Steer. Why? Because he won't stop following Brett around. Mike hates it. Mike is verbally abusing Robert all the time because... Brett is Mike's girlfriend, right? But Robert does not leave her only. And Brett also likes it. You know, men, men all around. <laughs> not one man to choose. Now, during this fiesta of bullfighting and other festival going around in Pamplona, Spain, Pamplona is filled with drinking and dancing. In another bullfight, a very major character enters the novel. The name of this character is Pedro Romero. So in another bullfight, the group, these people mesmerizingly watch a 19-year boy who is an efficient bullfighter. Oh, how he fights and balances the bulls. His name is Pedro Romero. Pedro is very young, very good looking. He's 19 year old. And tell me what will happen in this case. Remember Brett and her love for humans around, Brett instantly gets tempted towards Pedro. He seems to be at one with the bulls and Brett is mesmerized. Robert understands this instantly, okay? And Robert hates it. He gets insecure. Montaya also feels that Brett will corrupt the young boy Pedro. Mike verbally attacks Robert. They almost fight before Jake pulls them apart. Mike does not like Robert. You know it. Brett succeeds in all this, you know, cures. She succeeds in spending some lone romantic time, romantic time with Pedro and Pedro also likes it. When Robert senses what Brett is up to, he's enraged. In a party that night, he begins a fight with Mike, Jake, knocks them down. He fights, you know, even with Bill, he's fighting with everyone. Although later in the hotel, he asks for Jake's forgiveness for being so impulsive and violent. Here, the theme of impulsiveness and violence can be discussed. And after this, Jake says that he does not want to continue with them. He wants to leave Pamplona. And the next morning, he does leave. But before leaving, he fights with Pedro Romero because he thinks that, you know, he's a boxer. He can fight anyone. But no, no, no. Romero knocks him down. Romero knocks Robert Cohn down and Robert leaves the town. Now that afternoon, one more bullfighting happens in which Romero fights brilliantly during it, kills a bull, cuts off its ear and gifts it to Brett. And let me tell you, Brett loves it. Oh, a bull's ear. So charming, a dead bull's ear. With this, the fiesta comes to an end. Jake Mike and Bill, they leave Pamplona. They go their separate ways. So where does Brett go? With whom does she go? Oh, she goes with Pedro Romero. Brett and Romero become lovers and they leave Pamplona for Madrid in Spain. Soon after, what will happen? Come on, you know it. Will she last long with Pedro? Will she last long with any man? No, she won't. So Jake receives a telegram from Brett saying that she needs his help in Madrid. 
He goes to Madrid immediately only to find Brett all alone again. She has left Romero because Romero wanted her to act like a traditional woman. Romero wanted to marry her. She only wanted to have a fling. But Romero, the 19-year-old bullfighter prodigy, wanted to pin this lady down, pin this lady, you know, Brett Ashley down and marry her. She did not agree to it. And this takes us to the end of the novel, The Sun Also Rises. Jake and Brett ride in a taxi through Madrid. These lines are exactly taken from the novel. Now I'm starting to read them. Oh, Jake, Brett said, we could have had such a damn it good time together. Ahead was a mounted policeman in khaki directing traffic. He raised his baton. Okay, this is a phallic symbol. Please remember. The policeman raised his baton. The car slowed suddenly, pressing Brett against me. That is against Jake. They are close together. And to this, Jake says, yes. Isn't it pretty to think so? Which means it is pretty to think so, but it would have never happened, Brett. If you and I were together, we would never have had a good time because of your lusciousness. It is good that we are not together because of my impotency. At least we are living in this illusion that we both could have had a good time together. And that's how the novel ends. The sun also rises. Let me tell you, this rises again is a phallic symbol. The sun also rises. The baton of the policeman also rises, but one thing does not rise. And that has led to Jake's impotency. I hope you love the novel. I loved it. This is Hina from Team Wallat. You don't be disoriented in life. You don't think that life does not have a purpose. You don't move around like people for waiting in Godo. No, don't. Your life is beautiful and don't give it too much purpose. Just enjoy, just take walks, just meditate, be sufficient in yourself. I'm telling you life is beautiful. Even if you fall, walk up, get up, start again. Even if you have a tough time or a hard time, think that good time will come and it will come. Just take that positive energy and it will be beautiful. Take good care of your physical health, mental health and bye-bye. This is Hina from Team Walat. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe it right away.